to see so many being here. Uh, we have almost one and a half hour ahead of us to talk about Wikimedia positions and artificial intelligence. The idea is not that I will be talking for one and a half hour, but rather that we will talk together and have an interesting conversation around what, what would a Wikimedia, reasonable Wikimedia positions on artificial intelligence be uh, for us as a movement. And I'm Eric Luth, I'm working for Wikimedia Sferia, the Swedish chapter of the, the Wikime Wikimedia movement. And I'm also the national coordinator for a, for a network that's called Knowledge Rights 21. It's run by IFLA, the International Federation of Library uh, Associations, uh, and gathers a lot of library librarians and library associations across the world. And for me, it, is, it has been a very interesting um, it, was, it has been a very interesting network to join because it, I joined it at the same time as the questions about artificial intelligence and maybe especially around copyright got really, really intense. And I think that that for me posed new questions about what we as a wiki, as Wikimedia movement are. Are we um, are we a user rights organization? Uh, are we um, uh, building an uh, Encyclopedia, which of course, I mean, is still the main focus of the Wikimedia movement, or are we also a media organization? Are we a, a, a movement that represents rights holders that for sure have decided to give away quite a few of their rights, but still represents a lot of rights holders? And you, as a lot of you might know, rights holders in very many other parts of society have chosen to um, make it hard or impossible to use their material for training artificial intelligence. What does that mean for us as a Wikimedia movement? How how do we think when we uh, when we talk about all the users that are contributing with information to the Wikimedia platforms? Do we even represent the rights holders? That is, all the users that are editing on the Wikimedia platforms. So that that's a few of the questions that just appeared in my head when I started to to think more in depth about AI and, and especially around copyrights. Uh, and I think it's timely to start to think about, you know, what, what would reasonable Wikimedia positions around artificial intelligence be? Many of our allies and partners in the wider open knowledge movement have a lot of thoughts, and I know that there's a lot of thoughts in the Wikimedia movement as well, but I think maybe it's also, you know, it's a good opportunity during Wikimedia to actually to start to, to discuss if there are common Wikimedia principles that we could use in advocacy and lobbying efforts around AI ahead. Um, I'm doing the session together with John Cummings, who also works together with me at Wikimedia Sweden, and who I think a lot of you also know from different um, different Wikimedia-related activities. So, what's at stake? Uh, the the boring image to the right in the in the slide was me googling at stake and seeing if there's any synonyms, and I found this AI-powered tool that gives synonyms and got a few synonyms for at stake. Uh, but I think that there's a few different large issues and large questions around artificial intelligence that are going on in the same time around the world. Uh, of course, as I already said in the beginning, it's about intellectual property. Uh, who owns the... Uh, what, what right does an AI developer have to use material for training artificial intelligence? Um, and what rights do I ca can I claim on something that an artificial intelligence has produced? So there's a lot of questions around our inter intellectual property and especially copyright that is being been uh, born out of the rapid AI development. There's also a lot of questions around bias, uh, like how do we make sure that the output from the from the AI models produce hopefully rel reliable information and not disinformation? Um, and uh, how 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 can I mean if if we want to avoid bias through the Wiki, through the AI models, then also the AI models need to have reliable data to to, to train on. There's a lot of questions about personal data, and of course, uh, as I think is maybe mostly discussed in society at large, the impact on the economy. Um, but I think that the, the, these are the questions that are discussed in large in society, but it's also questions that all concern the Wikimedia movement very closely. Um, do we have a responsibility as a Wikimedia movement to make sure that AI models can train, uh, can train their um, AI developers can train their models on on uh, information from Wikipedia and Wikimedia as a way of kind of combating bias? Um, do we um, do we want to make all our information and content available for free for AI developers, even though it might have a big impact on our own economy. So all those questions, you know, that are debated in society are, of course, also very relevant for us as um, Wikimedians. Um, 
one thing is, of course, is that AI is not one thing. I mean, we, I, I think that a lot of people say AI and think ChatGPT or they think Copilot or they think, they, they think about one of the large, sometimes called general purpose AI models the, where, where you write something into a chat and you get the response or you uh, do a prompt to get an image of some sort and then you get, a, get an image out of it. Um, those are, of course, very much today used examples of AI models like ChatGPT and Copilot that have huge financial interests. They have, as I said, large impact of, of the economy of the world. They have quite a large environmental impact, of course. Uh, all data content needs to be stored on servers, and when they, use, when they require extremely large amount of data, that also means that they require extremely large amount of servers, and those servers need energy to be able to, to run. So there's an environmental impact to talk about as well when you talk about AI that I think maybe has not uh, been discussed a lot. And that, that's a competition about scarce energy. I, I think one example is not exactly about AI, but I think it's, it's, uh, it's um, for, for comparison was when um, there, was, there were plans for building a, a factory for produce, producing ammunition for, for the war in Ukraine, in Norway. Um, but finally, they couldn't do so in the beginning because TikTok had built new server, um, uh, built new servers in Norway that took all the energy that would have been needed for building a factory plant for for ammunition. Uh, so already today, we can see that the the large amount of servers that are needed for powering those very large, you know, data demanding uh, models that are used or platforms compete with energy that is, of course, scarce in society at large. Um, this is one kind of AI models, but we also know that AI, of course, is so much more. Wikimedia Sweden have, has, for the last few years, tried to develop a, a speech to um, text-to-speech synthesis um, that will make it possible to, to hear Wikipedia and not only read Wikipedia, but also in the fashion of Wikipedia that you that you will be able to to correct. To, to correct the speech synthesis by saying, you, you pronounced this wrong, this is how it should be pronounced instead. That, of course, also needs some kind of AI in order to, to improve, the, improve the synthesis and make it better with time. I know that there was a panel this morning that was also discussing a lot the, how, how Wikipedians and the Wikimedia movement had already integrated AI in the line of work. And there's a lot of niche and very important AI models that are being developed for for medicine, for agriculture, for for also saving the environment, um, niche models with huge societal benefits, trying to eradicate different kinds of cancers and and so on. So it's like I, I think it's important to bear in mind when we discuss artificial intelligence that yes, it is of course the 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 large uh, the large general purpose AI models, but it's also a huge amount of niche AI models that are filling crucial uh, gaps in society. So AI might not in be inherently in itself good or bad, it's more about what use we make of it, but also how to make good AI, to try to combat the, the biases that I mentioned in the, in the previous slide. Uh, how to avoid Habsburg AI. This is what John Cummings added as an important slide to the slide deck. Do you want to explain why we should avoid Habsburg AI coming yeah. to so I just want to tell you what it is. Uh, so it's an interesting uh, idea that uh, quite a few researchers are talking about. Oh, sorry. Um, is, that, is that better? Yeah. I feel like I'm very loud, but I hope you can hear me OK. Um, so it's an interesting idea that some researchers have come up with. Um, so uh, the Habsburgs were like a German-Austrian uh, royal family who basically died off because they interbred too much. Um, and there's this idea that when AI, AI runs out of data that's created by people, they'll start ingesting the data that's made by other AIs. And they're like slowly over time with more like hallucinations and incorrect information that they will just become sort of junk. It will be like unusable because it will kind of eaten itself so many times that it will be uh, something like this nice gentleman here. Thanks. That, that's much a better history lesson that I would have been able to to provide. Um, but I, I think that's also one of the big dangers with with uh, like, or w one of the maybe big questions to pose ourselves because we, as as John said, that if if no new data, no new content is is contributed to the to the developers and for training the AI models, 
then also you know the, it will be tra trained on the same model over and over again with which will eventually mean that the ai produces dumber and dumber responses to through the prompts that we are providing it with uh, so so like what is the responsibility for us as a wikimedia movement to to provide data needed to actually combat bias through ai models and also of course all other open access uh, and open knowledge movements in uh, in the world um Sometimes when we talk about AI development, there, there's a mention of three different Vs. You need to have those three different Vs in order to be able to, to develop a good, uh, good AI model. You need to have volume. That is, you, of course, need to have a lot of data. Uh, you need to have velocity. You need to have uh, a large amount of data power, like the data power that uh, competed out the, the ammunition factory in Norway. And you need to have a variety. You need to have many different kinds of data. If we talk, for example, about the large language model and you want to make it able to imitate different kinds of registers, then you can't only trade it on, on reports from the UN or from Wikipedia articles. You also need to have pros or you need to have like comments from Reddit as well, or you need to have the, you know, the, the, the way that everyone speaks from formal reports to the way that we talk with each other on the, on the streets. So these are the kind of three typical three V's that we typically talk about when we talk about how to do good uh, or how to develop a good AI models. Um, but I I wanted to kind of rev edit this this model model a bit and add a fourth V or maybe rather a, a W. Um, do we need to have Wikipedia and the other Wikimedia platforms in this equation as well? Um, as we know, most of the general purpose AI models, they use a lot of information from the Wikimedia platforms when they are training the, um, when they are training the models. Um, this is a reality. Um, is this something that we want to, to promote? Uh, in what way do we want to promote it? Should there be limits to, the, um, to, to how it can be used? Or should we, uh, in you know, the fashion of, kind of radical openness, say that it's you know, as 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 long as the information is shared and gets um, gets traction, then it's a good thing. Um, this the the entire situation also opens up a lot of legal legally tricky uh, situations. I've been working on on AI text and data mining and copyright quite a lot during the last few years. I don't want to turn this into a copyright seminar because then I think that maybe half would leave the room. Um, but there are a lot of really tricky questions when it comes to AI and text to data mining from a, from a legal perspective. Uh, and I think that these are also questions where, where it's really important to think as Wikimedia as what we actually, th what, what, what we think about these questions. So copyright, as I mentioned in the beginning, is perhaps one of the hardest legal uh, questions for, um, for AI in general. Um, how what 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 rights do an AI developer have to use material uh, for uh, for training an AI model? Uh, there are some provisions in in EU law now. There's uh, uh, there's developing court practice in in the US and in China as well around you know the 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 scope and the possibilities for for uh, training AI model with with uh, training AI models with contents. Um, Two new provisions came with the Copyright and the Digital Single Market Directive in EU in 2019. And I think after Poland was the last country to, to vote on it in, in the parliament. Now it's in implemented, implemented or under implementation in all EU countries. To give some clarity on what you can actually do with content um, uh, for training AI models. So there are maybe some, uh, some responses to the to the uh, legally tricky situation, but there's still a lot of things to consider. Um, EU also adopted a new AI Act uh, earlier this year, and one of the, I think, for me, tricky questions in 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 uh, this um, in this Act was uh, was a proposal that uh, y those general purpose AI models need to provide a sufficiently detailed summary of the material that they have trained on. Uh, so, for example, if the AI model have trained a lot on uh, on Wikipedia and Wikimedia, then they would need to say that uh, a large part or a substantial part of this model have been trained on material from Wikipedia and Wikimedia. Um, in one way or another, that 
that is close to a CC BY license in, in Wikimedia language. So that, that means that we are kind of putting a general CC BY license on all the Wikimedia platforms, which might be good because that means that it links back to to the Wikimedia platforms, we might kind of regain some of the, the traffic that could be lost if if um, the development with those kind of general purpose AI models meant that everyone is just asking ChatGPT rather than Googling and coming to Wikipedia. But at the same time, it also puts restriction into, into the possibilities of sharing knowledge. So I think that that was one of the, the questions where it's really tricky to know what is a Wikimedia position. And I'm not sure if we have like a, uh, a common view or the same thought around this. I think there might be m many different views only in this room. So there's, there's a lot of tricky legal situations. Um, and the, the questions that, that I would like to kind of hear your thoughts on here today is to what extent can Wikipedia and Wikimedia be the solutions to the, to the tricky challenges that we see with AI in, in general in society, in combating bias, in uh, um, uh, making sure that information remain, remains trustworthy on the internet? Um, do we want to be a part of, of uh, solving many of the issues ahead? And if then, what is needed? Uh, I can just say maybe very shortly that we, we provided a, uh, or wrote a report earlier this year trying to start to look into a few of those questions, but it was still on a very theoretic level uh, without many references to Wikimedia platforms and what it means for Wikipedia and the Wikimedia movement. And my idea ahead or our idea ahead is to start to kind of think about how can we take this down to, a, to an easier, more understandable level, but also a level that is, you know, to the core of what Wikipedians and Wikimedians believe in. So our hope is that we can kind of use the conversation in this room today as a starting point for, for discussing a few of those very important questions ahead and then maybe continuing and do a few consultations and see if we can end up with any kind of common thoughts or ideas on this. So, do you want to take over uh, yeah, yeah. John Cummings? Uh, Just interrupted you in the middle of researching the computer. This microphone is a bit going up and, and down. I feel like we have a radical difference in, <laughs> in, in length, so I'm trying to make it taller. Um, I'm just going to pass some post it notes out. Does this work? Oh, amazing. Uh, so I'm fairly sure we're going to run out of post-it notes, and I'll just have to ask you to write, write the stuff on your laptop. Um, I, we were not expecting this many people to come. It's really wonderful that you've uh, kind of all taken an interest in this. Um, so what I was going to do is just take you through a little process to uh, kind of think about this a little bit more. Uh, we recognize that pe different people have different opinions and also like different levels of knowledge on on uh, AI in general and AI with Wikimedia. Some of you may be very knowledgeable, be AI researchers even, uh, and then people like me who just read stuff in the news. Uh, uh, yeah, so um, I, I wanted to ask you first, like thinking about your viewpoints, like what do you actually know about, about AI and where have you kind of found that information from? Um, if you can just take like a minute or two just to write, write down your thoughts around this and then we'll do like a little bit of an exercise around it. Um, does that make sense? Oh, what do you know about a AI as a as a as a broad theme? What do you know about AI and like where 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 do you yeah please? 
Okay, okay, just a summary, just a summary. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just in general, just in general, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if you can't fit everything on that post-it note, it's kind of a sign that you're in the right session and you know what you're talking about, so it's good. Um, and if you need some more post-it notes, I've got some. And we'll just take like a minute or two for each question and then we'll go through some more and stuff. And the second question we have is like, what kind of feelings do you have around AI? What are your like, with the information that you have, how do you feel about it in general? So maybe you think it's great, maybe you think it's a big scam, maybe like, yeah, maybe you're like, oh, it will make lovely paintings, but nothing else. How, how, do, you, how do you feel about it? Oh yeah, how do you feel about AI? What, what kind of emotions does it bring up? Like, yeah, and, and just to be clear, like what we're doing is going through a process to kind of get this first like, kind of like mini snapshot of what the Wikimedia movement has, what opinions and feelings it has around AI. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Sure. Sure. I think yeah. we need the description in that case only. Okay. It's not, yeah. Does anyone need any more notes? Um, and if you're taking notes on your laptop or whatever, that's also fine. Uh, yeah. Um, and then the third question around viewpoints is like, what practical personal experience do you have with AI? Maybe you've tried to make like image generation, like famous actor riding tri like Tyrannosaurus Rex or whatever, or um, yeah. What, what kind of personal experience do you have with using AI? Yeah. Is the third question? Yes. No, no, it's fine. Just you can you can sign them if you want, or you can just leave them anonymous. It's fine. Sorry. Yeah. Sign. And then finally, just around like viewpoints, any other things that you have that you think about AI? So maybe I've not in one of the questions that I've asked, maybe uh, it didn't fit with that, but any other feelings or thoughts you have around AI, that would be great. Oh, anything else? Anything else around viewpoints? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> then he got five more questions. It's fine. <laughs> We're fine. We've got loads of people left. We can. Yeah. <laughs>
it's tough to think for yourself, no? It's much yeah. better to just... Yeah. Great. Um, and if I can ask you to, like, send all your post-it notes to the front of the room, I'm going like, to collect them all and put them on the, on the wall before the next... Oh, that's okay. That's fine. Doesn't matter. Can you just hold that? Oh, great, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just Sorry, everything over that side. Oh, <laughs> everything over that side, sorry. Um, do people need more post-it notes? I've got more questions. So we're just going to do this like, a, t like two more times, and then we're going to have a discussion. So there is a process to this. Um, so I guess my next question is around like concerns. So what are you concerned with about AI in general? So uh, Eric said around like environmental concerns, energy use, that kind of things. What concerns do you have in general around AI? Maybe you think in six months time it will be like Terminator and the AI will take over the world. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, if you can if you can just take some notes on like how your main concerns around AI. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, whichever you like. Um, no. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Included worries about the companies, things like that. That's completely fine. All your worries and fears. <laughs> And if you have no worries and fears, that's also OK. Great. Um, and my next question around this is what concerns do you have around AI specifically to do, to do with Wikimedia? Are we going to do a different bit of wall for this one? Oh, I, I'm not sure which. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, so, so your N concerns around AI and Wikimedia specifically. Uh, and we can use this bit of wall for those ones. Uh, and if you're writing on your laptop as well, that's also fine. Like, however you want to document this. I'm just trying to make it like a bit interactive and fun with like nice colorful bits of paper. Um, yeah. Do we feel ready to move on to the next bit, or do we feel like we're still um, writing on that bit? If you can pass all your bits of paper to the front when you're, or stick them on the wall here, that would be great. Um, yeah. is, is the question clear? Like, how how are you concerned about AI in general, and also with Wikimedia? Okay, uh, the th can you go to the next one? Oh, great. Uh, so the third and final kind of grouping uh, is uh, what questions do you have a about AI in general? So like, maybe you're interested in like how it works. Like, I, I don't know that much about it, how the practicalities of it work. Um, yeah. So it could be a question about like, how do we know this AI over here is doing good things or like that it's actually uh, what it's doing is what it says it's doing. So, yeah. So yeah, just, just questions about AI you have in, in general. Could be about the companies who run it, the people who make it.
Oh yeah, back to front. Oh, the questions one? Okay. Should start? Yeah, yeah, let's go. Start it. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> great. Yeah, and the, the second kind of uh, question around questions is uh, what questions do you have specifically around AI and Wikimedia as a whole? Uh, oh, what questions do you have around the use of, Wiki, use of AI and Wikimedia together? So it could be questions around like use of Wikipedia as training data, or it could be like, in three years, will anyone write Wikipedia anymore, or, or will it just be generated by, by bots? A any questions you have around AI? Sorry, do you want to say something? No, no, that's great. Okay. Uh, and when you've kind of thought about that and you want to stick them on the wall, please come and uh, please come and stick them on the wall. And if you don't want to stand up, just like wave me and I'll come and get them for you from you. Uh, okay, now I'm going to ask you to do some moving around. So maybe you were more interested in one or the other. Can I ask you to like choose one of the topics that we we like collated these post-it notes around and have a conversation with the other people who also stand next to those post-it notes uh, and have a like uh, kind of a more of a conversation like look at the post-it notes, see if you can see any common themes, anything that like came comes out of the conversation, please also add to the wall. Like, um, tr just try and like deepen the the things that are coming out of these. That that would be wonderful. And also have a think about how you how like if we did a larger consultation within Wikimedia, like what would be some good questions around it? Ha what would be some good ways of having that conversation? So it could be like we put a question on Meta and three people replied to it because no one knew it was there. But it could also be like, we have an RFC about it, or it could be like a discussion at another conference, or whatever you think, whatever you think is a, uh, a useful platform and method to like have more of a conversation around this. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the, the themes are questions. So if you want to talk more about questions you have with AI, that's here. Uh, this one is, Concerns. So if you want to like 
write some fan fiction about like AI going rogue in two years, or like you're just worried about I don't know something around AI. That's uh, that's here. And then the viewpoints one is, is over here where Eric is. Yeah. 
So I can hear lots of great conversations. If you can like summarize them and also stick them on the wall, don't worry about it being a big mess. That's my problem after the session. So uh, I'll come around with some post-it notes and some pens. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, on their computers, I think. And there's no whiteboard, no. Can you please remind me what's the difference? This one is uh, questions. Questions, yeah, okay. May I add one? Yeah, of course. Thank you. So, so for anyone that prefers writing on the computer rather than on post-its and sticking on a wall, John just put my email down on a on a few post-its. So, more than happy to send any thoughts and and comments to my or questions, viewpoints. Yeah, we're going to type all this up. I mean, the 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 idea is to try to gather this uh, information into some kind of coherent uh, structure, and then based on that, see if we can continue those conversations in one way or another. I, I think, I mean, I don't expect that we will be ending up with the Wikimedia position on AI, like that, that will be, but I, maybe we can at least deepen, you know, the, the conversations and have like more of, um, more of those attempts to try to gather w what are the questions, what are the concerns, what are the ideas. Um, one one big rationale for me for doing this is that like there's a few of us uh, working for Wiki, different Wikimedia chapters and for the Wikimedia Foundation that end up in different national and international forums for that talk about about AI uh, and where we are representing the Wikimedians. But what do the Wikimedians think? It's uh, it's difficult to speak on behalf of the Wikimedia movement when uh, there's you know there's few attempts to gather. Um, like uh, to gather all the insights. So hopefully this is a starting point for conversations rather than ending point. I see that there's so many post-it notes that are put on the put on the walls, uh, both with viewpoints and and concerns and and questions. We will do our best to to structure this in a, a good way. Is there anyone that would like to share thoughts so far, like with a microphone here in this? In this room, I heard there were a lot of conversations that were going on in the small groups, you know, between the between the post-it notes. Anyone that would like to to mention anything uh, out loud? Yeah. Do you have? Oh, there's. Uh, hi, Matt from Pennsylvania, U.S. Um, we we had a, a ranging, long ranging, wide ranging conversation. Um, some of the themes that came out of that were um, contributor motivation uh, to Wikimedia projects. For instance, if the large language models are being trained on Wikipedia content that is supposed to be, you know, Commons content, and then being commodified and commercialized through um, Microsoft efforts. What will that do to uh, actual motivation of the, the content creators who thought they were doing this altruistic thing, but they're actually training commercial models? Um, we also talked about uh, displacement or at least um, perhaps exaggerated fears or hypothetical fears of economic displacement for writing teachers and lawyers. <laughs> Um, and, and I'm a, a writing teacher, so I talked about um, the need for critical literacy among my students uh, when it comes to generative AI and text, um, text generators especially. Thanks. That's interesting. I just wonder, like, I mean, because we have this, uh, as I think most of you in the room know, like the, 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 the strictest license that you can, uh, that you can, um, that, that, that the Wikimedia platforms allow is the CC by SA license which also allows for commercial reuse. Um, so this is kind of supposes an interesting question, like where does the border go for how much commercial reuse that is, that is you know, considered? With attribution, though, correct? With attribution. With attribution, yeah, yes. So, so a lot of these models are not doing yeah. attribution, so yeah. they're violating the license. Yeah. No, that's, uh, that's absolutely a, a, f a fair point. Anyone else has a, 
thought on that same topic or on any other related or unrelated topics? Yeah, well, uh, I'm concerned about the increasing use of AI tools by deciders, those who decide. And in the Wikimedia or Wikipedia editing community, the deciders are the like the admins. And the increasing use of AI tools to detect what is perceived as, uh, I don't know, non-neutral point of view or different things like that. And the fact that more and more decisions are in fact suggested by these AI tools and it's no longer a human that's, that's doing it. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I, I saw also like a few different posts that were covering like similar topics, like how how does that affect like the volunteer community on, on the platforms if there's like an increasing amount of, of uh, AI tools that are implemented. Hello, because I just before I came here, I, I just have an interview with about AI and we were already uh, were concerned about the disinformation generated by AI. I think AI, AI become a very easy tool to generate disinformation and the false information and as the, as the generated content become more and more popular in on the internet and AI is fed with the generated information it is built upon the generated information becomes it becomes it generated itself and in this process uh, in very process because it has a possibility probability to 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 generate a content in this process the you'll get more and more mention and the diversity will disappear in this process and the content will be more and more na more narrow and also because we as Wikipedia, we largely largely depend on all those information. It will become harder and harder to to discriminate between good information and false information on the internet, and that would be that would be a very tough issue for for us for the admins to and to see if this is true or false, if the reference is okay or not. Yes, I would. I think that would be a very major concern, and also, uh, sorry, and also that since there are many, there are government control AI now. For for example, for Taiwan, for Chinese, Chinese is very specific to the China control AI model, and they generate a lot of content. So this would become a, 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 a they generate a lot of content based on the government's interests. So it would become, so if this content become a reference sources and it, it will affect the neutrality and it will, it will generate biases on, on Wikipedia, and that is another issue that we have to take on, into concern. Thanks, yeah, a few really interesting concerns. It's also a bit back to John's Habsburg uh, AI like slide previously in the in the slide deck. Um. Hi, yeah, just to, to add on to those um, concerns about making it more difficult to differentiate high quality from low quality um, uh, content, I think also this is kind of more of a second order effect, but because of AI companies and AI models needing all of this content to, to train on, we're seeing already websites like putting up paywalls or taking down their archives and all of these things to prevent them from just being used for free by these AI companies. And I think the more that happens, the harder it's going to be for Wikipedia editors to find reliable sources, even when they know that, oh, this is a reliable source, but the entire archive was just taken down from the website, or it now requires a paywall, and now there are additional steps needed to like get it in the Wikipedia library or something. Um, and I can I could see that being an issue, sort of regardless of what the AI outputs are. So if I understand you correctly, it's like yeah, the, 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 the threat of AI will mean that more information is locked by default and then it will be more difficult also for Wikipedia volunteers and Wikimedians to access good sources for, 
for like improving the platforms. Yeah, I think that that's also like one of the questions that I'm thinking a lot about, like how. And I, I think it ties back to also what I mentioned, like in 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 the in the introduction. Like I, a lot of us here are, you know really strong supporters of open access and sharing things openly and widely it's, it's a part of the core of the of the Wikimedia movement and, and that could also be like one of the one of the solutions in search of a better word like of AI distributing disinformation and misinformation like large actors that we we have we had a conversation with uh, with colleagues at the UN earlier today in, on similar topics as, as well, like th those big open access publishers like um, or platforms like Wikimedia uh, could play a very important role in making sure in, in combating this information through, through AI models. But what do we want to have in return? Like, is, is there like, do we require remuneration? Is it enough with, with sources? Is it like, how should like Wikimedia and Wikipedia especially navigate in this kind of new, very, um, th th this new kind of internet that, that is emerging? I think that's an interesting, uh, in interesting conversation for Wikimedians. And now I see that Matt want to. Yeah. Um, one thing I think that we need in return is some sort of agreement for data provenance so that, and that was another big theme of our conversation earlier, so that um, the large language model applications these companies are putting out are doing more to show the user where the information originally came from, right? So if it comes from Wikipedia, maybe linking directly to that article, maybe making a kind of a side note, you know, in terms of like, okay, here's the Wikipedia article, here's the reference section where, you know, that the contains all the sources for this article. Um, just because that's so crucial for basic information literacy for the user to understand that people are creating this knowledge, right? Not, not the actual applications. No, that, that, that's a great point, and I, I think I mentioned also in in the brief intro that like in the in the AI Act that was just passed in 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 the EU, like uh, I think formally previously previous during the summer, um, there is like a specific provision that says that the like large the general purpose AI models it's called in the AI Act, but that like the largely you know ChatGPT and Copilot and whatever, like they are obliged to to. Um, to supply with a, I think it's called like in the English sufficiently detailed summary of the sources that it has been trained on. Um, is is that good? Is it enough? Is it like, um, is it? Um, will that be followed? Like, will it be? Will that like actually be uh, followed by the tech companies in the EU? Just because there is that. Well, I, I suppose that's a question to 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 follow. But if they don't follow it, it's uh, it's uh, illegal. I mean, then they then they can be sued and taken to court. So it's uh, you know, do do people follow the law? I, that's yeah. But that's good news, and that's that's heartening. Penalties are high in Europe. The penalties are very high in Europe. Yeah, I think that's something that we have learned in GDPR, not the least that if you do something wrong, then it's expensive. Okay, say so look, we're we're Wikipedia editors now. Would it be a, a good thing if the AI companies were to say that they train their their models on on Wikipedia, because that just means that you know when the AI, AI starts hallucinating or gets to breed with his Habsburg cousins or whatever, then it's the whole reputation of Wikipedia that'll go down the drain as well. Because that's the AI trained on Wikipedia and gives gives crappy answers. So, is that what we want? No, I mean that, that that's in the other other end, right? I mean, uh, at least under under EU law, uh, now you can opt out from being used altogether in 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 the training of those large models. Uh, and most media, like w when I'm in networks with with other kind of. Um, media organizations, they are surprised that Wikimedia has not formally opted out and sa said that non, uh, no Wikimedia material can be used in the training of, the, of, of those large models. The, f the first thing is that I think it, 
it would be difficult to know who should opt out. Like, can Wikimedia, like, if, if, if that would be something that anyone wanted, could Wikimedia do that on behalf of, I mean, it's still, you know, the every contributor that has the rights to the uh, to the material that they have shared. But um, but it's also, of course, like a larger ideo ideological or like a policy question, you know. Uh, um, because if you would opt out, then what, would that cause much more disinformation through through the AI platforms? Would it be like a threat to the open access idea that is kind of at the heart of of the Wikimedia movement? Um, so there's a lot of real difficult questions in 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 the, in the entire field. But you, w w would you say that it would be like that that it's like if I understand you correctly, that the, the idea is is that it's kind of uh, harmful for Wikipedia to be kind of seen as the source of what the AI models have been trained on? Yeah, it's the attribution is harmful. No, no, it's the, it's the attribution. I mean, it's that if the AI company says that our AI is good because we trained it on, on Wikipedia, I'm not convinced that the AI, the AI will be really very good, but it's like they're using the name as a stamp of approval. Now, is that what we want? That's that's it. I mean, okay, maybe it's another issue. I am really not into these copyright issues, I mean, personally. I'm personally opposed to copyright. That's my, my opinion. And I'm a teacher, and I know that the vast majority of my colleagues never even think about copyright issues because globally, the teachers can reuse anything and photocopy anything as long as it's just used in their classroom. So they never, never look at copyrights. And so, I, I don't know. I, I'm uncomfortable with copyrights, and I I'm, think that if the AI models are trained on, on a, a vast database that's you know, with a neutral point of view and, and correct information and everything, that's positive for the way the AI itself is trained. So I'm not sure. All I'm saying is I don't think that it'd be a good idea to, to want absolute attribution for whatever they use in training their models. I don't think that should be a good thing for us. And it's in interesting, uh, like d very different uh, perspectives. I think that's very positive. You wanna? Just a Charlton Heston sort of end of Planet of the Apes apocalyptic question. Like we're talking a lot about obviously the digital world, but I just wondered how AI sort of like reflects in our thinking about the printed word, actual physical books. If, you, if you're if you talking about resources getting pulled away or locked up and the rest of the internet being a little bit more fragmented or a bit dubious or actual, you know, journalism sites that are, this article was written using AI, that you're less sure about actually citing in a Wikipedia article, doesn't that sort of force you to sort of like, in some respects, back into the library, to the physical world, to, to try and ascertain verifiability or expert views, or go to publishing houses where they say, we absolutely did not use AI in the publication of this work from this esteemed scientist or whatever. And, you know, what that, that whole process of what the internet was about and the, the idea of the Gutenberg printing press and the copyright restricting knowledge and then the internet's coming along and opening up and then sort of somehow pushing people back to the printed word and what that means, I don't know. That's an interesting point and may maybe it also ties back, I mean like authenticity has been very important in the last few, in the increasingly important in, in our age, but maybe it like makes authentic authenticity become even more important because people will only trust Maybe not even platforms, but certain persons that they trust, or certain certain writers, certain um, I don't know uh, what not. It's an interesting perspective. I think we are not talk uh, enough about opportunities to use AI in Wikipedia. I don't mean the content generation. I mean more like a tool, supporting tool. Uh, I copying a lot of uh, things from one point of source to the next point and then linking from Wikidata to uh, uh, OpenStreetMap and so on. And if I use there maybe AI to 
automate something would help me. But, but uh, I'm not talking about content generation, more as a support tool. And uh, I'm missing this topic total. Yeah. No, I mean, it's also, uh, I, again, I have to say first, you know, that there, there are those kind of general AI models like ChatGPT and Copilot that, that this is on the top of everyone's mind. But then there's also those very kind of niche applications that might be very helpful and, and useful in different circumstances. And it's, it's hard to talk about the one without going over into the other and, and vice versa. I think it would be interesting to hear more about historical and maybe literary explorations of ideas around machines and writing. So like, I'm thinking of Calvino's essay on cybernetics and ghosts um, from the 60s and how might those conversations um, around, you know, like the boundaries between the author and the machine better inform some of the questions that are coming up now. No, that, that, that's really interesting, and I, I recall listening to to a writer once who who not not about AI, but he, he he said that he he would never have been able to be a writer in the 19th century because then Microsoft Word didn't, didn't exist or any you know free version, and you had to like kind of you know delete and cut and, and move around if you wanted to do something. Now we could just you know change order of the of the of the um, paragraphs as he as he wanted. So like the the, the techn technological development kind of enabled him to be uh, a writer and that's also you know the on the other side of the spectrum. Like how can you know technology also help it, can, can it be something that helps us you know become better humans or you know, go further ahead. Um, I think, should we maybe start to try to round up a bit? I, I think we've had a great amount of post-it notes, really interesting uh, perspectives and, and thoughts. Uh, I don't think that we will end up with, the, you know, this is the Wikimedia position, this is what everyone agrees on. But I think for me this is very helpful just to try to kind of gather perspectives and thoughts from, from across uh, people in the movement or, or friends to the movement. Uh, John and I will have some fun time trying to just kind of decipher some handwriting and uh, and uh, uh, see what is said on those post-it notes. Try to categorize and and um, um, structure up, structure it up a bit, and then we will try to in, in different reasonable ways to also d disseminate the the results. I think that my email address might have been shared around a bit previously. So if you want to, you know, if you want. If you really want to have the the, um, the outputs, like the, our documentation of the post notes, then feel free to reach out. Otherwise, we will share it when at the places where it uh, is typically shared within the Wikimedia movement. Do you want to add anything further, John? No? Just to say thank you so much for like sticking with it and like going through the whole process. Uh, I know it was slightly confusing in some places, and it involved like standing up and walking around and stuff. But like, uh, yeah, thank you so much for for taking part. Uh, we really appreciate it, and we're gonna like use this information uh, and to like drive the process forward and hopefully like come up with uh, something that's useful for everyone. Yeah. So thanks so much. <laughs>